Hey everyone, welcome to Wicode. Where in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Chrome extension using TypeScript. So specifically, what we're going to be building is this little Chrome extension here with this, if you can see the C at the top. And essentially all it does is when you click on it, it'll add a button to any web page that says say hi to Wicode. And when you click on it, it'll have an alert that says hey Wicode. And this is created completely using TypeScript. So you can see the TypeScript code here. Um, that we're gonna use to make it. And as it has TypeScript, um, what's useful is we can use, check all the Chrome API utilities for um, building an extension, and it gives you all the different methods and um, things like that. So it makes building Chrome extensions much easier. But so this is what we're gonna be building. So to begin this project, we first need to initialize it as an ES6 MPM project. And we can do that with MPM init ES6-Y. What this does is create a package.json file with the type set to module so we can use import syntax. Now let's install TypeScript. And TypeScript is simply an NPM package called TypeScript. So NPMI TypeScript. We'll also install it as a development dependency with dash D as TypeScript is used for development but not for production. However, to get the benefits of TypeScript, we also need to install NPM packages from the at type scope. These packages contain TypeScript declaration files or files with a .d, .ts extension that inform the TypeScript compiler about all the typing information for the specific library. For example, installing types-chrome provides TypeScript type information for working with Chrome or building a Chrome extension. So we should install this, but also as a development dependency as well. And now we have both TypeScript and at types-chrome. Next, we need to create a tsconfig.json file. And the tsconfig.json file indicates the root of a TypeScript project and is used to configure the TypeScript compiler. We can create a tsconfig.json file by using npx and tsc. So npx, tsc, and then init is the command. So npx is an npm package runner that allows us to run executable JavaScript packages without installing them. tsc stands for the TypeScript compiler and it allows us to work with the TypeScript compiler. However, I believe that this is actually a flag. So npx tsc dash dash init. And what this will do is create a tsconfig.json file. And checking the contents of this file, we can see the default configuration for our TypeScript compiler. Most of the contents in this file are commented out, as you can see, and uncommenting that line will add that functionality. Some examples of, some examples of configuration options are out there right here, which specifies the output directory of the transpiled JavaScript files. For a demonstration, let's set our out there to be dist, which is short for distribution. Now, when we transpile our TypeScript files, they'll be placed in a folder called dist. Let's also create a folder inside our TypeScript app called source to hold all our source code. At the top level, src for source. Now, let's use tsconfig.json to specify this folder as the location of our TypeScript files that we want to compile. And we can do this by using the top level key include. So it's a top level key, so it's not in this object, but it's here, and we set it to source. So this, this line here, tells the TypeScript compiler to compile every TypeScript file inside the source directory and its subdirectories. Now let's use tsconfig.json to specify the folder we want TypeScript compiler to ignore. We want to ignore any node modules folder and our output dist folder. We could ignore this folder using the top level exclude key. Also, we specified our project is using ECMA script, which we did inside here by setting type to module with our npm init command. And as we specified it to be type module, we need to set the module key inside tsconfig.json to es or to node next. So look for the module key right here, and we'll set this to node next. The module key here sets the module system for the transpiled JavaScript files. Setting it to node next will allow us to transpile .mts files to .mjs files and .ctas files to .cjs files. In other words, the transpiled files can be either have ECMA script import dash export or common JS require and module dot exports. We will be working with ECMA script because we set the type key inside package.json to module. Finally, let's go back in here and let's set the root dir key to be the current directory. Now, when TypeScript compiles our TypeScript files, our project structure will be maintained. So now that we have our TypeScript configuration set up, let's begin configuring our Chrome extension by creating a manifest.json file. Every Chrome extension requires a manifest.json file at the root level of the directory. Now, let's fill in the required information. 
So required information is the version of this manifest file, which is three, name of our extension, and also the version. And now let's add the action and background keys. The action key allows us to use the Chrome.action API to control and configure the behavior of the extensions icon in the Google Chrome toolbar. So this icon up here, these icons. The background key, so this here, allows us to specify a service worker. A Chrome extension service worker is an extension's central event handler. They respond to events such as closing a tab, network calls, navigating to a new web page, etc. The background key takes a key called service worker that accepts the path to a script. So notice how we specify the service worker file as a JavaScript file and not TypeScript. This is because we will not this is because we will be using the compiled JavaScript code for the extension. TypeScript is for development. Let's now create the location for the corresponding TypeScript code inside the source folder. So let's create this location here, which will be a background folder, and then a file in there called index.ts. Now let's add some TypeScript code to our source service worker. So just paste some in here. And what this will do is add an onclick listener to our extension icon. When it is clicked, we will inject a script that creates a button, adds an alert message to it, and then appends it to the current DOM. So when our icon is clicked, we will create execute a script with this function that creates a button, adds some text, and when it's clicked, says, hey, wit code. However, to do this, we need to add a few permissions to manifest.json, namely permissions for scripting and also active tab. So back in manifest.json, let's add these permissions. So the active tab permission grants the extension access to the tab that the user is currently using. The scripting permission right here gives our extension the ability to execute scripts. Now let's create some handy scripts for working with this project. When we build our project, we want everything that it needs to be in the dist folder that TypeScript creates. This includes our manifest.json file, node modules, etc. First, let's create a script that will delete the dist folder and all its contents. So inside package.json, let's create this script and it's called clean. So it will remove the dist folder and all its contents. Note that these commands will be different on a Windows machine. So you might have to install some extra packages or just write the command differently. Next, let's create a compile script to compile our TypeScript code. So we'll call this compile, and this will compile our TypeScript code using the configuration inside tsconfig.json. Next, let's copy everything else that our Chrome extension needs, and we will call that this function copy assets. So this rsync command helps synchronize files and directories between two locations. Here, we are copying over everything that isn't inside our source folder, so exclude this, the dist folder, exclude that, and tsconfig.json. So we exclude these three here, and it will exclude them from the dist folder that TypeScript creates. We exclude the source folder because TypeScript has already compiled everything in there. As the project expands, this command might have to change, but for this, it works fine. And finally, let's run these commands one after each other, one after the other with a build script. So we can run clean, and then compile, and then copy over the assets. And just to note that this could be a lot easier if we were using a module bundler such as Webpack. We wouldn't have to use any of these commands as Webpack would do that for us. But this tutorial is solely focusing on using TypeScript. And finally, we just need to run the application and hope everything works. So when we run the command npm run build, what we should get is a dist folder, which we can see here. That contains everything we need, including node modules, package.json, package lock, our manifest file, and our source with the structure retained. So here's our index.js file. So everything's been compiled down. And also I forgot to mention in this index.ts file, we can see some typings. So we set this as an HTML button element, which of course, if we check inside our compiled down distribution index.js, that's been removed because it's solely for TypeScript and not JavaScript. But now we just need to simply load our extension into Chrome. And we can do that by going to extensions. So Chrome, a colon dash dash extensions, and then we go to load unpacked, go to the location, find the dist folder, just double click and press select. And now we have create a Chrome extension with TypeScript. And if we look for it in here, we can find create a Chrome extension with TypeScript. We'll pin it. And now when we click on it, see if we have some errors, unexpected token export. And the reason for this, um, it actually shows us the location. If we look inside our dist folder, which is what we loaded into Chrome, we can have, see an export statement down here. And this comes from the fact that we are transpiling our TypeScript down to JavaScript as ECMA script. And so to be able to use that, we have to specify the type inside manifest.json as module. 
Now if we set this as module, let's run this build again. It'll copy over our new manifest.json file. Now if we go back in here, clear all these errors, let's reload it. No errors this time, and we refresh this page. And if we click here, we can see we're getting this button appended to the web page, and when we click it, an alert dialog appears saying hello wit code. And this is all done from this code in here. But so this is my video on how to create a Chrome extension using TypeScript. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. But besides that, I want to thank you for liking and subscribing today, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.